Welcome back to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. Dan Fates, I am Jenna Cottrell. We're here at Highmark Stadium. Brandon Bean wrapping up his end of the season press conference. We talked to him for over an hour today. He answered every reporter's question. Before we get into what he said, please be sure to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the Buffalo Plus channel. Dan, I want to start with your overall thoughts on what Bean had to say. Like he's like all of us. I think he's still heartbroken. I think he's still trying to digest the last 13 seconds. Look, he said that he wishes, you know, that he made the golf competition. Comparison. There's no mulligans. He can't re tee it up. Uh, he said that he's not able to rewatch the last 13 seconds. He's not in a good enough place right now. But he also said, I think what, what I thought was very telling is how you evaluate moving forward. He said, right now, everybody is so emotional that you really can't break anything yeah. down. He goes, if somebody played great all season and bad in the game on Sunday, that shouldn't be the only factor. Or if somebody played great on Sunday and bore the rest of the season, that can't be the only thing. So I think you do need to take some time. I think fans need to take some time <laughs> and just take a breath. I thought that was Brandon Bean's most telling point. Yeah, I completely agree. And he talked about the play of Josh Allen and how Allen has answered all of those questions that people had coming into this season once again. He also said that if there is one bright spot after a loss like that, it is the play of Josh Allen and where this team can go from here. But turning the page, how do you think this team does move on with what Brandon Bean had to say because we know the offseason still doesn't slow down. There's the combine coming mm -hmm. up, the draft after that. What does this team need to do and what do you think Brandon Bean is thinking? We've heard a lot of the players talk about the sadness because they knew that this same roster wasn't going to come back and I think there are big questions. Yeah. Cole Beasley, Jenna, it was wishy-washy at best, Bean's comments about Beasley. He said he anticipates Beasley coming back. But that was after he said Cole can still play. I think he'll still play in this league. Yes. He didn't say he think he'd still play in Buffalo. Yeah. When he was asked a follow-up question by the reporter, he said he is still under contract and I anticipate him to be back. Yes. Not necessarily a ringing endorsement. He also talked about how Isaiah McKenzie kind of took his spot and added another dimension in the offense that Beasley didn't give them. He said Isaiah's, you know, the eye candy of Isaiah McKenzie was able to help their running game, something that Cole Beasley can't do. He said he was still able to play in this league, but it was uh, not necessarily a ringing endorsement. No, and he talked about other players specifically. Emmanuel Sanders, mm -hmm. another receiver, an older player. He's talked quite openly about, you know, being with the Bills and then heading to a beach after this season. And Brandon Bean spoke of, yeah, we, we're not really sure where Sanders is at in terms of what he wants to do next season. But another name to think of, Jerry Hughes, is someone that's mm -hmm. been in Buffalo for over a decade. When, when you think of Buffalo, you think of Jerry Hughes and his play here. And it... To me, it, it seemed interesting because Jerry's, you know, getting older. Brandon Bean kind of evaluating where he's at at the end of his contract and what this Bills team wants to do moving forward. Called him an aging lineman. I yeah. think that was a polite way of putting it. But he did say that his preliminary talks with Jerry um, are that he wants to come back. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are a lot of guys that uh, Bean had said the phrase over and over again that stuck out to me. If they want to come back, I'd listen to a conversation. Yeah. Like another guy was Starla Tula, like Jerry Hughes, Harrison Phillips. Yeah. I got a lot of guys that are kind of up in the air and that yeah. Levi Wallace, another guy that is not under contract. So there's a lot of those things that we talk about that, oh, like you'll just run it back. Like the Bills are good enough. Like they, yeah. you know, they'll yeah. be back to this spot. You know, they'll, they'll get another shot at the Chiefs and go back to the AFC Championship game. Yes, I do believe so because of Josh Allen, like Brandon Bean said, <laughs> but there are a, a lot of decisions. Contracts, aging players, uh, players that maybe are, you know, he said Ed Oliver played really well. I think that yeah. was another one that yeah. stuck out. Um, but Starla Tulele, a lot of guys there that – there is going to be a lot of work to do this offseason, like there is every offseason, but I think because of the loss that they suffered, uh, it makes you kind of reevaluate things. Yeah, and Tremaine Edmonds, another mm -hmm. guy that he was asked about. Um, we differed on that. Yeah, we did. I, I think Tremaine is obviously a huge piece of this defense. They've invested a lot in him, obviously that first-round pick, and they've spent a lot of time grooming him because, I don't know if you know this, but he's a younger guy, Dan. No. Um, but I didn't feel like he had the same – ringing endorsement as like last season when we asked about Matt Milano and how he talked about how he wanted to bring Milano mm -hmm. back. Obviously, there's things going into that. But look, it's hard to find a middle linebacker that's talented, that can run the defense, all of those things. But I just, I felt like personal op opinion, I felt like Bean was kind of hedging but you disagree with that. I, I I thought he was trying to stand up for him. And look, you talk about the difference between Matt Milano and Tremaine Edmonds. One is widely loved by this Bills <laughs> yeah. community, this Bills fan base, yeah. and that's Matt Milano. Yes. Not so much a Tremaine Edmonds, who, again, has missed plays. His, he is young, like you said, <laughs> and, and, that, and I think sometimes fans are impatient. And I think Bean kind of wanted to give him more time, saying that, yeah, some things 
younger players learn quicker than others. And some yeah. things takes years of experience. And as we know, he's young. So it's the fact of, I think some of those things go into it. He was asked about his instincts, uh, Tremaine's instincts. He didn't say he didn't have them. He said that he needs, there are some things he needs to work on. And, and yeah. I think those imply that that was one of them. Yes, which I always think instincts is an interesting thing to work on because instincts are not Correct. And he talked about all the things he has to do pre-snap. He's lining everybody up. He's yeah, the defense. Yeah. He's the quarterback of the defense. He, all gave, him, he gave him some rope. But, him but some rope. I also think when you look at it, is your player not instinctual enough? He's a freak athlete. Is he not instinctual? These are all questions that Brandon Bean will have to answer. And, I, and we know he's going to do that with Tremaine Edmonds. Um, I think another point, too, was just the, the talk of moving forward, the draft, what they're going to do, mm-hmm. what they're going to assess. And I thought it was so inter- interesting Bean talking about what they want to do. And I feel like you heard him say again how much he really evaluates these guys and then goes, who is the best player available? I feel like that is how he operates his draft board. And I know Bills fans want to know what what player are they targeting in the draft. And I really think it's going to be dictated by that. I thought the most interesting thing he talked about with the draft was because obviously he was asked about corner. You know, you have, yeah. you know, Levi Wallace's future is up in the air. Hopefully Trey White's coming back from his ACL injury. But how do you, you know, and being said, he goes, I know there were a lot of people that were upset that I didn't take a corner in this year's draft. And he goes, there were corners that we liked. He yeah. goes, but not at the certain spots. And he goes, well, Boogie was there in the second round and we liked him. And then he said, he goes, I can't take a guy above where he's valued. He goes, because it won't be fair to him his teammates, or his fans to put those yeah, unreal expecta- yeah, expectations. Yeah. Something that we don't think about. We're like, if you like a guy, just go get him. He goes, well, if I got a guy that's a fourth-round grade and I take him in the second round, he now comes in with everybody going, who's the second rounder? Yeah. And if he doesn't live up to the second round, he goes, he's a bust. And that's going to be labeled onto him. Yeah. That was very telling because and, I never And also thought- labeled onto Bean. Right. And yeah. so I never thought about that instinct. He goes, how are his teammates going to view him? Are they going to view him as, oh, this guy's got must have second round talent? And he goes, and he doesn't. Then yeah. that's that's not doing a service to him. That was the most telling thing where Bean, again, I, I, people in my mentions going, Bean is so much better in the media than, than Sean McDermott. That's always been the case. Brandon Bean is always a great talker. Yeah. Sean McDermott is the coach. Bean is the talker. Well, He's he, That's what he does. Also, it's day to day we talk to Sean McDermott. Correct. Whereas yeah. we talked to Brandon Bean. He's got to get fed our questions we, I was gonna say, What was I say? Maybe three times a year? Yeah. And he does it. He does it. Marathon. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. He answers everyone's questions. He does a phenomenal do- job. He's very, he, I mean, he he goes at length. He doesn't yep. skimp on things. But, but yeah, it's just a different situation. Bean is the best, and we've said it before, at giving you a soundbite but not making it a headline. I think that yes. is what Brandon Bean yeah, does. He will, really like analysis. I said, even the even the Cole Beasley comment. Well, he can play in the league. He didn't say that. Oh, we're going to move on from Cole, but he just gives you enough to say, yeah. hey, yeah, you know yeah. this, Josh, Tremaine, all these things. He gives you just enough to be like, oh, this is a good bite, but not enough yeah. to make it a headline. You have to read the tea leaves yes. to kind of pick up on stuff. Um, is there anything else that stood out to nope, you? It's cold. It's so cold. So we're gonna go. Um, I can't feel my hand. I didn't bring my gloves. Uh, thank you so or much. Mitten, or the scarf. <laughs> or the scarf. All right. Thank you so much for watching. For Dan, I'm Jenna. I was about to say Mike, but I'm Jenna. Uh, please be sure to comment, like, and most importantly, subscribe. Thanks for watching the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. Oh my gosh, I'm so cold.